ஹை ஆல் டுடேஸ் அவர் டாபிக் இஸ் ஷோல்டர் டிஸ்டோஷியா இன் திஸ் வீடியோ ஐ எம் கோயிங் டு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் வாட் யூ மீன் பை ஷோல்டர் டிஸ்டோஷியா அண்ட் ஹவு வீ கேன் மேனேஜ் ஷோல்டர் டிஸ்டோஷியா இஃப் இட் ஹேப்பன் வைல் கண்டக்டிங் த லேபர் ஸோ ஐ ரிக்வஸ்ட் ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ டு வாட்ச் திஸ் வீடியோ டில் த எண்ட் பிகாஸ் த மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ஆஸ்பெக்ட் வில் பி எக்ஸ்பிளைன் வித் த ஹெல்ப் ஆஃப் எ வீடியோ விச் வில் பி டிஸ்பிளேட் அட் த எண்ட் ஆஃப் திஸ் செக்ஷன் ஸோ ப்ளீஸ் ஸ்டே ட்யூன் இன் வாட்ச் இட் ஷோல்டர் டிஸ்டோஷியா when a fetal head is delivered but shoulders are stuck and cannot be delivered it which is called shoulder dystocia failure of the shoulders to transverse the pelvis spontaneously after the delivery of the head in shoulder dystocia the anterior shoulder become trapped behind on the symphysis pubis while the posterior shoulder may be in the hollow of the sacrum or high above the sacral promontory when we discuss about the incidence the overall incidence varies between 0.2 and 1 percentage next we'll see the predisposing factors of shoulder dystocia these are fetal macrosomia obesity diabetes mid pelvic instrumental delivery post maturity multiparity anencephaly and fetal ascites Next we will discuss about the warning signs and diagnosis of shoulder dystocia. The delivery may have been uncomplicated initially but the head may have advanced slowly and the chin may have had difficulty in seeping over the perineum. Once the head is delivered it may look as if it is trying to return into the vagina which is called turtle sign. This turtle sign is the typical sign for shoulder dystocia which I shown in the picture here. diagnosed when maneuver normally used by the midwife fail to accomplish delivery next we'll discuss about the management principle there are few management principle we need to keep in mind while conducting the shoulder dystocia delivery which include some don'ts and some do's first we'll discuss about the don'ts first one will be do not be panic do not give traction over baby's head do not apply fundal pressure next will be the do's call for extra help clear the infant's mouth and nose involve the anesthetologist and the pediatrician while conducting the labor perform episiotomy if not performed earlier here we reach the management aspect of shoulder dystocia the management of shoulder dystocia will be based on the mnemonic base which is called helper h for call for plenty of help e for episiotomy l means legs in microbert position p for pressure that means applying suprapubic pressure e means enter rotational maneuver which include rubin woods or rewards woods maneuver r for remove posterior arms next r for roll over onto all fours the details of each one of this management will be explained with the help of a video please have a look on it shoulder dystocia occurs during childbirth when the anterior shoulder of the fetus as seen here becomes impacted behind the symphysis of the mother take note that during labor slow progress in dilatation or expulsion of the fetus head bobbing and a turtle sign might indicate shoulder dystocia with head bobbing a jerking movement of the fetal head is seen as the head appears and retracts during each push during the course of a turtle sign The head may be delivered partially or suddenly retract back against the mother's perineum after it is born. If the head of the fetus is not delivered completely, the caregiver may assist by placing the thumb and index finger on the perineum of the mother and slide it off over the head of the fetus while looking at the perineum of the mother. Emptying the bladder of the mother with a catheter is considered to create more space in the pelvis if a shoulder dystocia is expected but may not always be performed after the birth of the head the neck is palpated with two fingers to check whether the umbilical cord is wrapped around the neck 
Take note that if the fetal neck is tightly encircled by the umbilical cord and it cannot be freed without cutting the cord, the umbilical cord is cut only after the shoulder dystocia is resolved to prevent oxygen deprivation. During a normal delivery, when the head of the fetus is born, an external rotation of the head of about 90 degrees is visible due to the internal rotation of the shoulders. If there is no spontaneous rotation of the neonatal head, the mother is encouraged to push to see if a rotation takes place. If rotation does not take place, the head is grasped with the fingers of both hands interlocking over the occiput of the fetal head and continuous downward traction is applied on the head towards the sacrum of the mother. In an alternative technique, the index and middle finger of the dominant hand are placed on both sides of the fetal neck. The non-dominant hand is placed on top. Then, continuous downward traction is applied towards the sacrum of the mother. Take care not to put too much traction on the head. The head should also not be rocked from side to side. This may lead to irreversible injury to the brachial plexus of the fetus and should be avoided in all births. Also take care not to apply fundal pressure in an attempt to resolve the shoulder dystocia since this is associated with a high neonatal complication rate and could cause a uterine rupture. If the aforementioned techniques are unsuccessful, it is advised to call for additional help if available, since this is now a complicated delivery. Additional manoeuvres to free the shoulders will need to be performed. First one we'll discuss is the Rubin manoeuvre. In the Rubin manoeuvre, you want to place two fingers from one hand behind the baby's anterior shoulder and attempt to rotate it forward thereby rotating the baby through the pelvis. To demonstrate, what you're attempting to do is to rotate the baby's shoulder anteriorly like this. That's the Rubin maneuver. Next maneuver is a wood screw. So you still have your two fingers posterior or behind the anterior shoulder. You then attempt to take two fingers from the other hand, place them anterior to the posterior shoulder or in front of the posterior shoulder and simultaneously rotate the baby through the pelvis. That is your wood screw. To demonstrate. You're going to have two fingers behind the anterior shoulder and two fingers in front of the posterior shoulder like this and you're attempting to rotate the baby. If that doesn't work, then you can do the reverse woods. In this case, you put two fingers anterior to the anterior shoulder two fingers posterior to the posterior shoulder and again attempt to rotate the baby through but in the opposite direction as such. So for that maneuver you will have two fingers anterior to the anterior shoulder, two fingers posterior to the posterior shoulder as such and then again you're attempting to rotate the baby through. stands for three things. First one is remove the arm. With that, you place your hand in underneath the baby. Run your fingers along the baby's humerus. Once your fingers get down to the antecubital fossa, and you press on it, the arm will flex forward the elbow. You can then grasp the forearm and either pull straight out or 
Try to sweep it across the baby's chest and rotate the baby out. So to demonstrate, you run your fingers along the baby's arm. Once you reach the antecubital fossa, the forearm should flex up. You then grasp the forearm and either pull straight out or sweep it across the baby's chest, rotating the baby out. Second part of the arm is roll the patient. You roll the patient onto all fours. You then do the exact same type of maneuvers as you would do if the woman was on her back. By rolling her onto all fours, the pelvis will fall off the spine and open it up about a centimeter, the pelvic diameter about a centimeter, plus just again the motion may actually act to dislodge the shoulder from the symphysis. So you move the woman into position, then you just do the gentle traction downward and hopefully the baby will just nicely deliver. If it doesn't, then you can do those same maneuvers again. Ruben, wood screw, reverse wood screw. Final maneuver I'm going to discuss, another rescue maneuver, is the Zavanelli maneuver, uh, made famous in an ER episode. What you do is you basically reverse the cardinal movements of labor and then do a cesarean. So before you can even think about doing the Zavanelli, you have to make sure you've not cut the cord. So if your cord is still intact and you've got ready access to cesarean section, you then take the baby's head, flex, rotate to OA, push up, cesarean section. Again, flex, rotate to OA, push up. That's your Savinelli maneuver. This is about the shoulder dystocia and how we can manage once it happened while conducting the delivery. So I hope you all understood about the shoulder dystocia and its management. So we will meet in the next class with an another episode of midwifery topic. Till that, take care. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.